But what I have been trying to do is really trying to sort of um, give you the context and also talk about practice of mindfulness uh, in terms of vichara uh, or vichara, uh, sampa, as I mentioned yesterday. Contemplation. Contemplation has to support your meditation. So contemplation on mindfulness practice is just as important as trying to make yourself sit on the cushion for half an hour or uh, ten minutes or five minutes, whatever. You know, it's, in fact, actually it's even more important than you sitting on the cushion. Because putting your practice in context, in context, and trying to understand what's going on is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have been saying, unlike what a lot of people think, meditation is not just about being in the present, being in the now, but we have to appreciate the past. And um, we have to think about the future. And um, you, we have to use the practice, meditation practice, to um, bring all of that together. And um, and also we have uh, we talked about you know uh, the meditator, yeah, the the one uh, the the individual who who is who is doing the mindfulness practice and. Uh, and yesterday I said, um, don't, we, we should not focus too much on, you know, what is me? Uh, I have to find my true self, uh, you know, uh, forget that. Uh, you know, again, forgetfulness, remembrance, we talked about that a, a, a lot, so I won't you know, go over it again. But, so forget that. But instead, remember to pay attention to oneself as a person. Yeah, a person is a very tangible thing. You, you're an embodied human being with thoughts, emotions, feelings, with a body. But true self, you know, thinking, I have to rummage through my mind and, to, and then I'll get to my true self. Oh, man, what is that true self? You know, um, usually I'm sure it would depend on your mood. You know? It doesn't help, in other words. So, um, uh, so yesterday we then talked about you know, reinventing uh, uh, oneself and re uh, you know, uh, reconstruction of the person that one is is an important part of practice um, in terms of um, contemplation, in terms of um, uh, contemplation practice. Because uh, uh, dealing with bits and pieces about ourselves is what will transform us. And that's, that's the truth, you know, according to Buddhism. And that's why mindfulness practice is so important, so necessary, because you have to pay attention to all kinds of different aspects of yourself. Like I said, bits and pieces, meaning different emotions, different feelings, different uh, kinds of attitudes, uh, different beliefs that are all part of ourselves. By paying attention to each one of them, uh, as we become aware of them, then we learn how to either learn to forget or we learn to remember in uh, respect to each one of them. So, 
So that's what um, uh, I'm going to talk about this morning, uh, you know, how to enrich oneself. Uh, so having said that, you know, there is no self to speak of according to Buddhism. Nevertheless, what we, sh um, we can focus on the person. Uh, we can focus on the person, Kangsak in Tibetan, um, Purush or, or Purusha in Sanskrit. Self and the person are not the same. Kangsak and, uh, you know, that are different. That in Tibetan means uh, Atman, which uh, is, you know, like soul or, you know, uh, some kind of, um, you can think of it as sort of like an immutable self or some kind of metaphysical self. Kangsak or Purusha, on the other hand, is the person. A person is somebody you can talk to. And, you know, uh, <laughs> And the person has a body, and is of certain age, um, has a history, and so on and so forth. Now, when people want to talk about uh, the self, whatever, they want to think of the self in an ahistorical fashion, you know? not related to time and space, you know, sort of. Um, Atman, even in Hinduism, means unrelated to time and space. My true self is immune to all the happenings and all the changing circumstances and so forth, not related to my body, not related to my birth circumstances, and not related to my past, nothing. No, just I have this self kind of thing. In Buddhism then, um, we talk about enriching ourselves, uh, enriching ourselves, and we have to enrich ourselves by hanging on to things that we should hang on to. And, they, and that is not seen as attachment. And this is the interesting part. Mm -hmm. In, uh, you know, as Buddhists, uh, we, we are taught that, you know, don't be attached to anything. You know, attachment is the greatest evil or something of that sort. And, uh, and not being attached will lead you to liberation and being attached, on the other hand, will lead you into more and more, uh, you know, sort of, you get more entangled in this samsaric confusion. But actually Buddhism does not say that. Well, um, of course attachment, uh, you know, it's not something that we should entertain. But hanging on to things that are worth hanging on to is what would enrich us. Not letting those things go, not letting those memories to fade in, in, uh, uh, into the distance. Learning to remember and having these things etched in our memory will enrich us. Uh, things that we should, that we should remember, cherish, nurse, um, uh, and to really hold dear to our heart. By doing so, you as an individual, as a person, would become enriched. By um, nursing and you know um, things that will demean you, demean you like you know resentment, bitterness, um, 
feeling of hopelessness, helplessness, um, despair, then, then, then you become impoverished. You become more and more impoverished. Because that's what you choose to remember. That's what you choose to hang on to. So, Buddhism then does not say that we should not um, hang on to certain things. I mean, you know, if that's the right word. I mean, you know, being attached is one thing, but seeing the uh, again, as I have been to uh, saying all along, if we give, you know, this kind of meaning, uh, the meaning to our past experiences, and we think, well, this is really, you know, uh, so and so did something for me or to me that was so uh, touching, so good, then we should nurse that instead of saying, oh, it's attachment. I, I should not think about that because Buddhism teaches non-attachment, so I should not think about that. But instead, uh, we should think about these things and by thinking these things, we become enriched. And, and that's what is meant by uh, gathering of merits. Gathering, uh, gathering of merits. So, merit, uh, uh, according to Buddhism, is an extremely important uh, uh, concept, uh, by the way. Um, if we have merit, then we attract all kinds. We can attract all kinds of good things. Uh, you know, uh, you become sort of like a magnet to um, good things. But if you do not have merit, then everybody will get repelled. No, it's like uh, you have the opposite um, kind of, you know, um, um, the, you generate some kind of, you know, uh, you generate, you generate some kind of um, something, uh, some kind of energy that push, uh, push uh, things away. You know? So, um, so opportunities does not come your way, people uh, will uh, find you difficult, um, uh, not easy to deal with, um, and um, people may try to avoid you, and, uh, and you know, ev everything starts to go bad, and that's the truth. As a person, you know, if we hang on to the good things, and then learn to forget and let go of the good, the bad things in life, we actually get, get to do that. You, know? uh, you, you become that kind of person who, in a really very fundamental sense, you become attractive. You become attractive um, uh, to people. But 